So you get a potato and then you get a borer. The borer is inserted into the potato to remove a cylinder of potato. You use the same potato borer to remove six other cylinders of potato, which will be of varying lengths. You then use a scalpel to cut the cylinders down to the same length. This is a control variable. The cylinders of potato must be the same lengths. So what aspects of the potato must you control? So we call these the control variables. So you must keep the species of potato the same. It's really important. You can't use different species of potato. You must use the same age of potato or at least potatoes that don't look that different. And also the surface area and the volume of the cylinders of the potato must be as close to the same as possible. We use control variables to make sure our results are both reliable and comparable. It's question time. Attempt these questions to check your understanding. Now we need to set up the beakers of water with different sugar concentrations in them. So you firstly have to measure the initial mass of the potato. And you do this for all of your potato cylinders. And then you place them inside the differing sugar concentrations for the same amount of time. So in this case, they all stay in the sugar solutions for 30 minutes only. After 30 minutes, you remove all of the potato cylinders. You must then Dab them on tissue paper to remove any excess water. If you do not do this, this will affect your results. You then weigh the potato cylinders to calculate their final masses. So what are the control variables for this stage? Well, we must control the volume of sucrose solution in each of the beakers. We must also control the temperature in each of the beakers. And we must also control the time in which the potato is kept in the sugar solutions. It's question time. Attempt these questions to check your understanding. So the data you needed to have recorded was the initial mass for each potato cylinder and then once you've taken it out, the final mass after it's been in the sugar solution for 30 minutes. Because we controlled the volume and shape of the initial cylinders, the initial masses should be very close to being the same mass. So in this case, they're all around 5.7 or 5.8 grams. However, the final masses will all be different. This is because the potatoes have been in different sugar concentrations. So as you can see here, we have a range of results from 6.5 grams to 5.5 grams for the final mass. So we now use the equation percentage change equals final mass minus initial mass divided by initial mass times by 100 to calculate the percentage change in mass of the potatoes. This is to compare the results. So for each potato, you calculate the percentage change. So if the first one is going to be 6.5 minus 5.8 divided by 5.8 times by 100, then it's going to be 6.1 minus 5.7 over 5.7 times by 100. And this process repeats itself. It is the final mass minus the initial mass divided by the initial mass times by 100. And you can get and will get both positive and negative percentage change of masses. It's question time. Attempt these questions to check your understanding. So we now have here the percentage change of masses for each of the potatoes and the different sugar concentrations. We're now going to draw a graph. And this is going to be percentage change in mass on the y-axis against sugar concentration on the x-axis. 
And as you can see here, I'm plotting the percentage change against the sugar concentration. And you should get a reasonably straight, inversely proportional straight line. You then use a ruler, which I'm stupidly not doing, to draw a line of best fit going through as many of the points as possible. And it is at the point where there is zero percentage change in mass. So it's the point where the line intersects the X axis, whereby this is the concentration of sugar inside the potato. So the sugar concentration for this experiment inside the potato is approximately just below 0.6 moles. Press pause to answer the questions. The answers will follow. And if you're stuck, just rewatch the video. Press pause to go through your answers and make any corrections to your mistakes. Visit kscience.com for more free videos, worksheets and quizzes at kscience.com. And don't forget to like and subscribe.